Yeah, it's together. That's it. Where am I going? You'll know when you get there. Where's the legal aid? I asked for a lawyer a long time ago. I'm sure there's a phone where you're going. Hi. I want to interview Susan Lewis. You're with Homicide? Right. Angela Cosmo. Let me check where she is. She was booked out by Sergeant Kurtz. They took her where? Homicide interview. Thank you. Somebody's on the boat. This is his car over here. I didn't want to run the plates in case she's a cop and checks for any stupid kids. That's a good idea. Maybe we can get somebody else to do that. Hey, it's me. Where are you? Yeah, I need you to arrest somebody for me. Yeah. Ocean fish. Okay. Should be a patrol car here in just a few minutes. What's the entertainment going to be this evening, then? Just you and I. Oh, that sounds perfect. I understand you're repairing bridges with the mayor. Yeah. Let's talk about him for a minute. I've only got red, is all right? That's fine. Tell me if I'm right. You're looking at the mayor as being the next in line to be premier. Well, that's the traditional route out here. A couple of terms as mayor and then on to Victoria. But what if he stumbles? Well, why would he stumble? I thought that was all going away. Oh, okay, but what if? Let's say if he chokes. You're looking down the bench there, you don't see a replacement for him. So now you don't have Vancouver. You don't have the province. You don't have the West. Well, that would be a disaster, which we are prepared to avoid. At whatever cost? You really think that a man should be crucified simply because he has a girlfriend on the side? That's well, not that simple. That reeks. Tell me again about Danny Zero. I told you all I remember. Well, let's recap then. You and him knew each other pretty well. You got drugs from him now and then. And you knew Trent Murphy, Murph. You also scored now and again from him. And as far as you know, Murph and Danny are pretty well acquainted. Yeah. Do you remember a conversation you and Murph had just before Christmas three years ago? What'd you get for Christmas three years ago? At the time, wearing some cufflinks and a couple of CDs. <sighs> what was the question again? So it's possible you talked to him around Christmas time and you simply don't remember the content of the conversation. It's possible, sure. Well, I'll help you. The more or less, and I'm paraphrasing here, you told Murph you wanted Danny Zero dead for Christmas. I never said that. But you just said you spoke to him. You just don't remember exactly what you talked about. That's not what I meant. So it's possible you could have said that. You're just not remembering it now. I would have remembered saying that. I would have remembered thinking that if it were true, but it's not. Murph thinks you were trying to solicit him to kill Danny. <sighs> nope, sorry. That's the impression he walked away with. If that's the impression Murph got, then he's an even bigger retard than I thought. That soup. Could you take that out of the room, please? Is this your car? Yeah, yeah it is. What are you doing down on that fish boat? That's off limits. You didn't see the crime tape on that? Take it easy on one of you guys. You're on the job. Yeah. You got some ID that shows that? Sure. Are you picking it up? Yeah. What's going on? What are you doing up here? Something I'm not liberty to share with you. I got a number you can call though. Sounds like he's American. Hmm. You got somebody up here you're working with? Yeah. There you go. Hey. Hey. Everything went well with the guy in internal? Yeah, I, I think so. You're not going soft on me, are you? Am I going to have to test a fan court? Absolutely, there's no doubt about that. Don, you heard somebody confess to a murder. She's guilty. She killed somebody. No question. We got her on two others. According to you, Brian gave you the knife to plant in the council. Think Brian killed Rick? If it was Rick's blood on the knife and Brian gave me the knife, duh. Well, if Brian killed Rick, he must have a lot of faith in you to trust you with a murder weapon like that. I guess. But you're saying you lied to Brian. You told him you planted the knife, but you never actually did it. Yeah. 
You lie to everybody, don't you? That's your thing. That's how you navigate through life. No, it isn't. You lie to Brian, you lie to Angela Cosmo, and you're lying to me. No, I'm not. You know what? We don't even need to waste time talking about Rick Prentice. That's a slam dunk. How about we go back to Danny Zero and, uh... What's this girlfriend's name again? Hey, you with me? What's your name again? Carla. Carla Wonder. Right. I'd say, knowing what I know about you, that you're a hypocrite. Hypocrite? Like, all I'm saying is, if you can't have a little piece of action on the side discreetly, which obviously this mayor can't do, how can you expect him to run a, a city, let alone a province? He can upgrade his handlers. His handlers? The horse is out of the barn already. The best he can do now is get the broom and get the uh, dustpan. I'm huh? getting the distinct impression you're not what? convinced he's out of trouble. Oh, yeah. You know your red light initiative depends on the mayor's election to another term. You understand that? You know, you seem to think that he's just going to win this next mayoralty contest, like in a walkover or something. I'm just not so sure he's going to clear all the necessary hurdles. Is there something you want to tell me that I should know? Yeah, there's a couple of things you should know. <laughs> Kurtz, she was supposed to be an interview. No, I haven't seen her. What are you doing? Clean out my desk. I got six weeks. Right, I heard. You'll be back. Yeah, no, no. Who are you looking for? Sue Lewis. Kurt signed her at a pretrial. There was a lawyer in here about a half an hour ago looking for her. You couldn't find her either. Hmm. Yeah, Angela Cosmo. I was just in there looking for Sue Lewis. You got her booked out to homicide, but she's not here. Looking a little rough. I could get the nurse over here. What do you mean? Jail nurse. I could see if there's something to make you feel a little better. Maybe something to get you to sleep at least. You haven't slept yet, have you? You could do that. Go into your drug counselor. You confessed to killing Danny. I don't have a drug counselor, and I didn't say that. You're going in circles. You didn't go for counseling. You didn't talk to a uh, Donald Marcos for heroin counseling? I only went to that place a couple times, and it was like months ago. You wanted to get clean? No, I had just talked to the guy a couple times, and I didn't like him, so I didn't go back. Tell me this. Why would Brian kill his informant? What reason would he have to kill Danny Zero? I mean, what reason would he have to kill Carla, for that matter? I don't know. I mean, where did this idea come from? Did Angela Cosmo plant that in your head? No. Okay, technically, I don't know that he killed Danny, but I know he killed Carla. How? Are you gonna get that nurse in here or what? We'll see about that. Continue. I'm pretty sure I was there the night he killed Carla. You were there? Okay, good. This is the whole truth, all right? This isn't a confession. I'm not confessing to anything myself. What happened? Brian asked me to make sure Carla was gonna be home one night. Okay. So Brian gave me a couple of flaps of down to split with her to guarantee I could keep her home for a while. So we split the flaps, and later that night I left by the back door. I left it unlocked for Brian like he told me to. Then what? And nobody saw her after that. She was missing for a while. Then they found her body in the basement. That's it? That's it. That's your confession. I told you, it's not a confession. So you set her up? No. I didn't know he was going to kill her. What did you think Brian was going to do? I don't know. She was avoiding him. Well, this doesn't prove anything. 
isn't gonna help you at all. Can you call the nurse now? Please, I feel sick. Probably the most paranoid friend of all my paranoid friends, you know that? Paranoid? Maybe I'm just more aware of what's going on all around than most people. Yeah, well, you see connections and uh, conspiracies where there aren't any. That's a probably a pretty classic definition of paranoia. Okay, well, you explain to me why I've got a private investigator going through my garbage and tell me I'm not paranoid. Well, all right, why don't you start by uh, making up a list of all the people you've pissed off lately? Well, that's a very long list. It's my point. Okay, you start off at the top. I guess the mayor's got to be right up there. Your point is? Well, I'm thinking about more in lines of business community. Business community? What are you talking about? A safe injection site. What? Chinatown merchants aren't too thrilled with you institutionalizing that in the backyard. As if the Chinese merchants are going to hire a private investigator. Give me a break. What about the uh, red light district, huh? I mean, where are you going to put that without riling up the neighborhood, the tourism board? The tourism board, as if they're going to go out and hire a private investigator? Are you kidding me? Sure they would. Are you kidding? What? People might want to try to get a jump on you before it gets wheels under and, and organize the community against it and pretend like it's a local initiative. I haven't even decided where I'm even going to put the damn thing yet. So Maybe that's just what they want. They want information. So why would they do that? Maybe Maybe that's what they want, just what? information. Hey, wait a minute. That's my car. What are you doing? You can't tow that car. It's going to tear this way to hold it. It's going to pull it. Hold it. You have a Susan Lewis in the system? She would have been booked yesterday. Yeah, Susan Lewis. She's not back yet. It says right here she's over at Homicide for an interview. Oh, I was over there last night twice, and I checked the hospitals, too, and I'm pretty pissed at getting around here. What time was she checked out? Uh, last night, a little after 7. So they've been going at her all night somewhere, but you don't know where. Sorry, no. I apologize for the quality. Who's the guy? I checked with this liaison up here, RCMP Inspector Barrist. This guy's Rob Sims. He's with the DEA. Hmm. What Barrist say when you talk to him? Just let him do what he was going to do. He asked me if I reported this to anybody yet, and I said no. He said good. Anybody know who Barris is? What's his deal? Well, he was with the street crew for years. Really? Mr. Norton! Oh, hello. I wasn't expecting to see you again. Yeah, I'm like a bad rash. I won't go away. Hmm. I have a couple of questions for you regarding uh, Michael Zhang. I was informed the case was ruled a suicide and put to rest. This isn't uh, about the suicide directly. This is about another gentleman, Mr. Torelli, who hung himself from the bridge. He was a client. Other than that, I don't know anything that could possibly help you. Commercial crime in Edmonton is investigating him for um, money laundering. Were you aware of that? I was aware they were investigating some accounts at his bank. One of those accounts belonged to Michael Zhang? Now, that I didn't know. Yeah, apparently he was a friend to a couple of money launderers. And Mr. Zhang's accounts over there were emptied out shortly after his death. And then uh, about a week later, Mr. Torelli comes down here, he meets with you, and then a day later, he kills himself. That's an unfortunate coincidence. No kidding. You got a lot of cash disappearing, a couple of guys killing themselves, apparently, in rapid succession, and they're both clients of yours. I'm wondering if you knew anything about their relationship. I'm not aware of anything at all, other than they were just both my clients. Well, you're the go-to guy for money laundering, it seems. What was Mr. Torelli's business with you? I was helping him purchase a freighter for clients of his in Switzerland. How much one of those go for? I believe the asking price was around $7 million. Well, I'm going to want to see the contracts on that purchase. Just call my office, and we'll have them package stuff for okay. you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Torelli, did he leave any money in your hands? No, he did not. OK. And you'll get those contracts ready for me. Just call my office. This is great. This is great. Here you go. Thanks. Oh, oh, oh! Hey! I had my thing displayed, my ink! Damn it! Driver's license? I want the name of that tow truck driver that just went out of here, the one that towed my car, that car right there. Yeah, well, we don't give out that sort of information, sorry. Look, I'm the city coroner, okay? And I have a parking permit, okay? I got the tag, the yellow tag that was hanging right in the window. Mm -hmm. And you were on duty when you were towed? Yeah, I was on duty. I'm the, I just told you I was the... Never mind, just take my money. I spent enough time on this already. Here, put it on that one. You got a supervisor here? It's not taking charge. Oh, well, let's try this one. You need to say you got a supervisor here? What well, seems to be the problem today, sir? What's the problem today? I'll tell you what the problem today is the fact that one of your drivers towed my car in here, despite the fact I got a parking permit on display. Sometimes our drivers are just trying to keep up with the calls. Yeah, well, me too. Well, I want you to see for yourself. Would you just come with me for one second? 
I'm not seeing any tag up there. Well, it was there, okay? It was there when it was towed, because I saw it. Open. Is it there on the floor? Yeah, that's it there on the floor, but it wasn't there on the floor when it was towed. It was up here. I leave it like there, there all the time, so I don't forget. No, I'll tell you what. I'll tear this one up. How's that? Thank you very much. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, my bag's gone. My, my, my briefcase, everything, my stuff. All my stuff was sitting on the front seat there when it was towed. Now it's not there. Where were you parked? No, now it's in. I noticed you got a lot of scratches on your door lock here. Looks like somebody was trying to jimmy. No, 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 that was me. Uh, that was a couple of weeks ago. Look, I, I gotta have the name of that driver. Can you give me the name of that driver that brought it in here? Well, I gotta have it. I got a lot of sensitive material in that bag. I gotta know if it was open. Did he open it? Did he get in here? Did he see somebody? You know what I mean? You sure your briefcase was in here? Yeah. You didn't leave it at the office? What's going on? We had Sue interrogation all night. I think they got a confession. Are you kidding me? I was trying to see her all night. They had her somewhere else internal, probably. I'm getting shut out. Have you interviewed Brian Curtis about any of this yet? I haven't sat him down officially yet. He's next to my list. I'll see if there's anything to Sue's allegations. We've ruled it out and can show that we did. OK, well, that brings us to the problem of Angela and her relationship. Is there anything concrete against her? It's all right there in her own files. Direct Prentice murder. Sue was in his apartment the night he died. She left and called it in hours later. She's an addict. Rick was a drug dealer. Despite all this, apparently Detective Cosmo refused to even look at Sue as a suspect. I mean, she could plead straight stupidity, I suppose, naivete, however you want to put it. The point is, I think she's a liability in homicide. And you're going to have a hard time defending her. All right. Thank you. You said what? Come on over here and say that. Why don't you come on over here and say that right to my face? You're mobile. OK, I'm right here. Beautiful. Damn it. What? My bag's missing. I got the car back. There's no bag in it. And this, this tow truck guy, this modern day pirate, He's trying to tell me I left my car wide open. Why would I leave my car wide open? And half my notes, my book's in there. That's half my notes from the last month. I don't even know what else is in that bag. You're not going to tell me now that I should have backed everything up and I wouldn't be in this problem right now, are you? OK. That's good. Uh, Ted Fellows is here to see you. He's the father of Alice Fellows. Oh, OK. Maybe send him in. OK, did you want to maybe take a minute, settle in? Review your file notes? I can't. My file notes are my... Oh, that's funny. You're funny. You got to write a book. Mr. Phelps? Hey, nice to meet you. First of all, my condolences. Thank you for seeing me on short notice like this. No, no, come on, take a seat. Uh, this won't take long. OK. I understand that the young man who stole the car has now denied hitting her. Yeah, I understand that'd be correct, yeah. Well, if he's to be believed, who did hit her? Well, that's a good question. We're continuing to look into this. How's it going, this looking into it that you're doing? Well, I wish I had something concrete I could give you. My office is cooperating with the Accident Investigation Division of VPD, with their investigator over there, and we're all continuing to look into it. it I was already over there at the Accident Division. Oh, yeah. And I was told that the lead investigator here had taken six weeks vacation. The lead investigator there, but yeah, it's true. He did take six weeks vacation. You're sticking my stepdaughter's investigation on the back burner. No, I really wouldn't characterize it like that. Well, how would you characterize it then? Hmm? Is it a high priority, low priority, medium what? Very, very high priority. Sir, I wish I had a more satisfying answer I can give you. All I can do is tell you that when I do, I'll be calling you. I'm a criminal lawyer. Hmm? And if you would ask me how you sound, I'd have to say you sound pretty evasive with your answers. Huh? You're pretty much on the money there. So there's something going on here which you're not at liberty to share with me. That's correct. Not at this point in time, anyway. I'll tell you what. This is the card with my uh, direct line on it. I'll call that number whenever you feel like it. I'm not going to have to chase you down, am I? No, sir, you won't. All right, then. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. I've been reading and hearing about your various exploits in the media. No. Oh. You appear to be a man of integrity. Well, thank you. I hope that's true. Hey. 
Sanjay Gohill was wondering if you and I can join him later in the week for dinner to discuss the red light district. Yeah, sure. Anytime it suits you, suits me. Hmm. Have you talked to the mayor yet? Well, I left a message. I said it wasn't about the red light district, but I haven't had a return call yet. And how about Bill Jacobs? How are things in that front? Same thing. Left a message, no return call. Okay, so if I tell Sanjay later in the week, we can sit down with him and tell him we have the city and the police on board? Well, probably. I mean, I left both these guys uh, messages stressing that it wasn't about uh, anything but the red light district, but still waiting for return calls from both. Okay, so what do you think, Thursday or Friday? Friday's probably better bet. All right, good. Oh, by the way, do you know a good body shop? Yeah, well, Liebman's over in the uh, car conventicles there. Why? Oh, somebody clipped the car last night. Didn't even notice it until I got in this morning. How did you not notice that? Well, it's on the passenger side. So what was the name? It's uh, Liebman's. Liebman's. Clark and Venables. Yeah, just tell them you know me. Scotch, right? That's right. <clears throat> Congratulations. Joe Finn tells me you have three cold bodies off our plate. Thank you, but I think that's a premature assumption by Joe. The Crown seems to agree there's enough there to convict. We'll see, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to argue for keeping Detective Cosmo on the squad. She bungled the murder investigation of three police informants. Now, how the hell are we supposed to get reliable intelligence if our snitches are dying and we're not protecting them? Well, that's the world according to Joe Finn, and I don't agree with it. You're putting it down as what, naivete on Detective Cosmo's part? Naivete, yes, in this particular instance. But Angela's relationship with this informant is not at all indicative of her career. I'm in agreement that she behaved inappropriately but I think she deserves a second chance. Well, if we can get a conviction on the informant for the homicides and we get your detective's full cooperation in that, I see no reason why she can't continue. The informant is convicted. Angela can stay in homicide. Seems fair enough to me. No? Seems fair. I'm coming to you because I'm investigating the death of Will Summers. Familiar with the name? Afraid not. Let's see. He's a fisherman. Owned a boat named the Ocean Horizon. He got killed during an attempted ripoff of a couple thousand pounds of locally grown weed there. Yeah, I think I heard something about that. Oh, yeah? So, do you have any intelligence on his activities then? You might want to share it with me? No, I wish I could help you out. But, uh, you know, if you have anything you want to share with me, I'd appreciate hearing from you. So, you guys weren't running any operations then? It might have just overlapped there a little bit? No. Huh? What about a guy, a Vietnamese guy named Vin, Vin Tuan, you know that name? Not ringing a bell. Oh, so on his arrest sheet, you're down there as a part of an investigating team. Popped him on a marijuana trafficking charge like a year ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, he may have been one of those involved in a conspiracy case. Right. I mean, I can get you whatever we have on him. Uh, Perfect. What's your name again? McCleary. You can just ship it off to Homicide and find its way to me. Next couple days okay? That'd be perfect. Mick Leary. Remember that name, don't you? Keep coming, keep coming, just keep coming. All right, stop, man, stop it. Yep. Is your name Monty? Yep. Hi, Monty. My name's Dominic Da Vinci. I'm with the coroner's service, not a cop. Can I ask you a couple of questions about that hit and run? Go ahead and talk to my lawyer about that hit and run, man. I'm gonna answer any questions. Okay. See, I, I believe you didn't hit that girl. Well, that's good, I didn't. I'm still not answering you, though. You want to hear what I think happened? No, it doesn't matter at all. Well, it at should. At all. Because this thing's not gonna go away, Monty. Just because they tossed your statement out of court and you got yourself a nice job now and everything, it's definitely gonna come back on your heart. Because you know what, Monty, in the natural order of things, you got a mayor, you got a police chief, and you got a car wash jockey. Now, who do you think ends up at the end of that stick? You. But I think I can see a way through this thing, OK? You stole the car, and I don't care where you stole it. If you stole it in front of the mayor's house or the girlfriend's house, that doesn't matter. But here's the question. This is important, OK? Did you notice if there was any damage on the front left side of that car that it was kind of smashed in? There was, there was no damage to the left front fender. You, you know for sure there wasn't any there? Uh, well, I didn't. You didn't I see any? Why would I check? But how did you get in the car when you stole it? I got in through the passenger door. It left it unlocked. It was left unlocked, and so you got in that car seat, and then you slid across behind the wheel? Slid across behind the wheel. Yeah? 
So you didn't check the damage, eh? Like, I got you. It's not a rental car. You're not looking for a dent check or anything. But you didn't notice if there was a front fender, like, all damaged over here. Right? I didn't understand. Because uh, I got your statement in here that you gave to your friend there, Sergeant McNabb. Okay? And in your statement, Monty, you were drinking. You maybe had smoked some marijuana and all that. I don't care about any of that. But it, here's your own words. If I hit her, I didn't uh, notice. Okay. That doesn't mean I hit her. Huh? Your buddy McNabb, he's a... I don't know, he's he's riding me, All okay? Right. I'm trying to give him an answer, he's a... It wasn't a confession, I'm trying to be sarcastic and he didn't get it. Okay, okay, okay I believe you. Okay. I think that the hit and run occurred before you stole this car. Well, I agree. Okay. And, and, and I think that the damage was on the front fender. Like, you can truthfully say you never saw the front fender. I can absolutely truthfully say that. I came up from, from the back there. Okay, and you can truthfully say that when you stole the car, I was sitting there parked on East Bay. No, I cannot. I'm sticking to the first statement. It was in the mayor's driveway. Oh, you're beautiful. I'm sorry. Okay, we didn't see any damage on the, uh, on the front fender. We're still right there? Correct. Thanks, Monty. You've been a big help. Appreciate that. We're going to be in touch. Both these witnesses came by way of Brian. Why not explain myself clearly? You're going to want to untangle yourself from this as soon as possible, and all I've been getting so far is resistance. Sue confessed to some involvement in Carla's death. She was denied reasonable access to a lawyer. She admits that she was with Carla the night she was killed, that she set her up for Brian. Brian's been setting her up to do a lot of things. There's also evidence that she killed Rick Prentice. That's the second charge against her. The third charge against her is for soliciting someone to kill Danny Zinn. Well, I'll have to talk to her about all that. No, you won't be talking to her about all of that or anything further. You are no longer to involve yourself in anything to do with Sue Lewis. I understand. I want you and Mick to move on to your other cases. I understand. So he denied knowing anything about this DEA guy. He didn't acknowledge uh, he was his handler up here? Yeah, he snowed me there. But I got him to admit that he knows Vin Twan, so I'm going to chase up that lead. No, oh, you ain't going to get rid of the horsemen. They're going to keep on shutting you down. You're going to have to find another way around. Yeah, I know. I'm going to talk to the Crown, find out why he got released early. Hey, Ange, talk to you later. Sure. So what happened? Sue's getting done on this. I'm not allowed to talk to her. All those cases are off limits. What am I going to do? I don't know. Maybe you were wrong about her. You know what's going to happen? Brian's going to get a desk in homicide. No, no, no. Take it easy. That's not going to happen. You just need to lay back off this for a little while. The whole case is going to blow up down the road, right? What you need not to do is get yourself deeper. In it. Just leave it alone. All right. I'll leave it alone. OK. We've got to talk to the Crown. Let's go. Yeah, listen, you mind if I pass? I, uh, I need to be at my place to meet the plumber. Plumber? OK. I should take the day. Just go chill out for a little while. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get over it. I just need some time to let it go. You know, it's not the first time a snitch screwed up a case. You know that, right? We all get played sometimes. Yeah. Hey. You're good at this. Don't let this take you down, OK? Dominic. Hey, Leo. You got a minute? Well, sure, if you money to come on in. Thanks. How you doing? Not uh, good. Just taking some holiday time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here he gave old Plotchko the cocoa bump. Yeah. Pretty good. I wish I'd been there for that. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, nothing. It's just, uh, you remember a couple years ago, he said uh, to look you up if you ever needed a good investigator? Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm just wondering if you had anything for me, because uh, I got a few weeks off and nothing to do. Sure, sure. Yeah, I know a guy. You can give him a call. I appreciate it. Who's the guy? He's uh, ex narc uh, He's got a general investigations thing going on, Oakdale security, that kind of thing. David Chin. Okay, appreciate it. I'll, I'll give him a call. Well, I'll get him to call you. Okay, thanks. You see Leo, Leo, Leo. Yeah. I've got something I want you to do for me. Yeah. I kind of sense that we got, I got this book. It's just full of numbers, and I'd love to know what's actually going on there. Okay, I'll check them out for you. And make a list. Yeah. That shouldn't be too hard. I still got my old crisscross director. Oh, great having you working on that. I'll check it out and uh, get a list together for you. Just kind of keep it quiet, okay? Well, I don't know what you really expect of me here. Okay, I'm in the middle of all this. And I just, you know, if I don't do something about this hit and run thing, I think I'm gonna, it's gonna chew me up. Well, I thought we were saying that Zach was taking the lead on this. Zach, he took holiday for six weeks. Well, fine, let him take it up when he gets back. In the meantime, he should continue to make amends and build some bridges. All right. You have the meeting with the mayor today, yeah? Yeah, about the red light district. 
You're not going to mention the hit and run, is that correct? Yep. Sorry, is that a, is that a yes or a no? You're not going to mention it, right? Right. I can talk about the red light district. All right, best of luck then. Thank you. Look what just showed up. Are you kidding me? Oh, this is great. Isn't that wonderful? We got yeah. it back. It was in that dump strip by Phil Rosen's. There it is. What? My, my notes are all gone. There's none of them. Everything's gone. It was a blue dumpster by pole 143. 143. than me. Yeah, I'm starting to not mind the color, actually. So I tried to get a hold of your mom and Camelops. Oh, he did. Did you talk to her? No. no the phone's been disconnected. <sighs> Good. Don't bother. Well, I can explain to her what happened. She might be able to help you out with the bail. Seriously, don't even waste your time. I don't want you to. Did you talk to Legal Aid? Yeah, finally. Yeah? What'd they have to say? They said that I'd probably get a reduced sentence if I cooperated. I'm gonna get you a good lawyer. I'm gonna take care of that. Thanks. I heard what you told the investigator about being with Carl the night she was killed. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about that. There's ways around that. A good lawyer can deal with that. I mean, you, you didn't know what was gonna happen, right? You didn't know what Brian was gonna do. Right. And Murph's a total liar. He just totally made that up. What about the counselor? Same thing. I didn't say a thing to that counselor. Are you sure? Because I'm going to be talking to him. I swear. You probably don't even believe me, but I swear. You have to go now, I guess. No. I can stay a little while. I'm not supposed to be talking to you, so... Okay, I won't say anything. Ah, Dominic. Well, 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 our paths cross again. Nice to see you. Hey, Isabel. Dominic? Yeah, we were just in seeing the mayor, making sure he understands you've got our backing on this. And he understands? He does. Okay. Oh, and, um... We're getting together later on in the week, aren't we? Yeah, no, I got you standing here. I, I, I'm drafting a, a press release. I'd like it to go out tomorrow. I think you should wait on that. It's not a done deal yet. I mean, we still have to get the Minister of Justice's approval. Okay, so maybe I'm jumping the gun here. Well, maybe if you manage to announce it without indicating any official type of commitment, mm. that might be better. I could say something like, uh, we've been in preliminary discussions. Uh, nothing's committed on your side yet, but you're going to take it back to Ottawa with you. Good. Yeah? Yeah, send it over. We'll take a look. And um, anything needs changing, well, we'll talk. Is that something on the lines that... Sounds great, Doug. Okay. We'll see you again soon, eh? Okay. Hey. All right. Dominic. How are you? Oh, not bad, Richard. How are you? Do you have a minute? The mayor asked me to speak with you before the meeting. Oh, you're the mayor's lawyer now? Well, he asked me to mediate relations with you. Hey. Well, there's conditions being met here before I can have the meeting? So if the mayor's going to give his support to this red light initiative, he's going to need your support in going for a third time. I understand. So we need to be able to clear any hurdles right now. I don't really see any hurdles. All I want is the mayor's assurance that I'm not going to have to wait until he's in that third term before he starts to support my proposal. Well, I'm not sure that he wants a red light proposal on his election platform. Wait, are you kidding me? No, no, no. You think I'm going to wait around until he gets elected again before he starts supporting the Red Lake District? I don't think so. He's got to have that. He's got to have that in his platform. And I'm going to tell you why. Because he says, here we are responding to the public concern over the missing women and the pig farm and all of that, that we are working on harm reduction. If you pledge your support to his campaign, I'm sure he'll be inclined to push it ahead. This, this is a deal breaker, Richard. OK. I'm planning on issuing a press release tomorrow stating that we're going to go ahead. I need a statement from the mayor and from the police chief, all three of us, that we're going together on this all the way. All right. OK? Give me a minute. OK, thanks. Do it here. Mr. 
Mr. Da Vinci? You can go in now. Yeah? Why don't you ever ask us to see you again? Hello, sir. Dominic, come on in, sit down. Thanks very much. So, I understand you managed to drum up some support from the feds. Well, it appears to be the case, yeah. Mr. Goldhill says that he's prepared to go to Ottawa and deal with that and the thing, sir. That's excellent. Now, you're okay with the timeline here? You're prepared to issue a statement of support, a press release, say, in the next day or so? Yeah, I am. Great. Well, I guess what we're dealing with is the same set of circumstances we had with the safe injection site. We need to pick an area that's the least invasive and the most effective. Sounds good. Okay, I've got some things here. Sure, yeah, Vin Tuan. He made a deal and they released him. You know what kind of a deal and what? No, I'm not privy to that. They just come and say he's going to be useful to us. He's going to provide some help on a conspiracy case. We need him on the outside. That's the horseman behind the deal? Yeah. yeah. Now, did they go to him or did Vin come to them or what? I seem to recall he came to them fishing for a deal. Yeah, so he must have known about something big then. Yeah. Trying to get out from under his time. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck on this one. Thanks a lot. I appreciate okay. it. What prompted you to come forward to the police with this information on Susan? I felt it was the right thing to do. Why now, as opposed to a month ago or six months ago when Sue told you what she told you? An old client of mine back in Toronto, a meth user, committed suicide recently. He shot himself. He once mentioned during a session that he owned a shotgun. I made a mental note of it, but I never told anyone. That bothered me, that knowledge. I was... I suppose I was looking to clear my conscience. In your statement, you said that Sue had been coming to you for counseling for over the course of several months on and off. That sounds right. Do you take notes on your sessions? Not usually. That can make the client feel uncomfortable. I keep files. You keep files. The statement you made to the police, do your files back that up? The files? No, they wouldn't. Why is it your files don't match the statement you made to the police? The files, they contain only very straightforward information, drug history or physical health prescriptions, things like that. Right. Okay, I see. Would you mind if I had a look at Sue's file? I think I would mind. Do you have a warrant? No, but I can come back with one if we want to go down that road. Listen, I take my client's privacy very seriously. I've already made my statement about Sue's statement regarding Danny's Inn. Any other information is irrelevant, and I'm not going to simply hand it over to you. Mr. Da Vinci, you're next. Dominic, how's it going? Good. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think the timing is right. Well, you thought so a couple of weeks ago. You wanted to be on board. What happened? I'm still on board, but I think there's a couple things that we need to get straight before we go forward. We're talking about the right cardinal situation? Yes, we are. I want that cleared away, Dominic. Well, you disciplined two of your officers. I did. Six-week suspensions. Ouch. That must have hurt. What would you suggest? Well, I think you ought to send a message to the public that you got their best interests at heart. At the same time, you still got to send a message to your members that you're going to watch their backs, too. I think I've done that. I disagree. What it looks like is that you close ranks around your officers without discrimination. The worst offenders, they got to be tossed. I can't do that. Look, I assume you know what I know, that there were two officers who took the lead here, and then there's at least two officers watching their back. The lead officers, I want them tossed. I don't think you even have a witness to any of this anymore. I understand he's somewhere in Australia. Witness? Witnesses can be found. Let's say I give you one of the offenders. Well, then I'd say that we're back on the square and working together on the red light district proposal. You'll drop any further investigation on the Cardinal case? I will. I'm also going to want to see some sort of signal from the Justice Minister letting me know that we're not to continue enforcing the present soliciting statutes. Oh, yeah. Well, I understand that's about to happen very soon. As soon as you can confirm that for me, I'm on board. Beautiful. I knew Will. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't. Yeah, well, we used to be friends a long time ago. Anyway, so he was making another run because he wanted to rush again? Does that sound right? Yeah. He got bored easily. So you knew then maybe he was up to something, even if you didn't know what. There were signs he was making a plan to do another run. You would have noticed that. He was acting a little differently, yeah. I guess you could say that. So you did know there was another big deal underway? No, I guessed that something was going on, but... You ever tell your brother about it? No, why would I? Well, you visited him in prison just a couple of weeks before Will was murdered, didn't you? I visited my brother every week. And did you ever tell him that Will was planning to make another big run? No, we never talk about things like that. Okay. Well, thanks for your time. I'll be back to talk to you again, all right? Tell your brother I'm looking for him. Sure. It was delicious. Sorry the rest of the family couldn't come over. 
Should bring him a doggy bag at least. We got plenty. Yeah, definitely. Next time it's at our place, I'll cook. Good. Sweetie, why don't you get your cousin a nice slab of ribs to take home, okay? Okay. Dici la mamma per aiutare. Si. Nothing wrong at home, is there? No, no. I gotta talk to you about something, though. It's not good news. I knew this was coming. Don't do it. I gotta let you go. Jeez, go on. I don't know if I can take this. I'm gonna make a couple of introductions for you. In fact, I think I got your job already. A job? Hey, this is my job, all right? This is my life. You'll make more money than you're making now. It's a security company. Security? Here, why don't you just take this knife and why don't you just stick it in my heart? Thank you, sweetheart. This is gonna be appreciated. So that's it? It's done? I'm afraid so. Tell your mom thanks again for me, okay? okay. We'll talk tomorrow. Daddy, what's wrong? Nothing. Come here. What do you say we pick some tomatoes, huh? Looks like rain. We'll, we'll pick them all and we'll can them. isn't over, visit davinciesinquest.tv. At Sacred Heart Hospital, we treat patients like family. <laughs> Giving each individual the kind of personal attention you won't find anywhere else. <laughs> Carla! Our doctors are among the best in the nation. Clear! I'm alive! And we're the leading edge in diagnostics. Well, this kid has a light bulb up his butt or his colon has a great idea. In our home, you don't just get better, you get the best. And every employee takes pride in his work. Man, I'm making it worth my while. Scrubs, weeknights at 11.30 on Superstation WGN. Yeah, I, I think so. You're not going soft on me, are you? Am I going to have to testify in court? Absolutely, there's no doubt about that. Don, you heard somebody confess to a murder. She's guilty. She killed somebody. No question. We got her on two others. According to you, Brian gave you the knife to plant on the councilman. Think Brian killed Rick? If it was Rick's blood on the knife, and Brian gave me the knife, duh. Well, if Brian killed Rick, he must have a lot of faith in you to trust you with a murder weapon like that. I guess. But you're saying you lied to Brian. You told him you planted the knife, but you never actually did it. Yeah. You lie to everybody, don't you? That's your thing. That's how you navigate through life. No, it isn't. You lie to Brian, you lie to Angela Cosmo, and you're lying to me. <sighs> no, I'm not. You know what? We don't even need to waste time talking about Rick Prentice. That's a slam dunk. How about we go back to Danny Zero and, uh, what's this girlfriend's name again? Hey, you with me? What's your name again? Carla. Carla Wonder, right. I'd say, knowing what I know about you, that you're a hypocrite. Hypocrite? Like, all I'm saying is... If you can't have a little piece of action on the side discreetly, which obviously this mayor can't do, how can you expect him to run a, a city, let alone a province? He can upgrade his handlers. His handlers? The horse is out of the barn already. The best he can do now is get the broom and get the uh, dustpan. Huh? I'm getting the distinct impression you're not what? convinced he's out of trouble. Oh, yeah. You know your red light initiative depends on the mayor's election to another term. You understand that? You know, you seem to think that he's just gonna win this next mayoralty contest, like in a walkover or something. I'm just not so sure he's gonna clear all the necessary hurdles. Is there something you want to tell me that I should know? Yeah, there's a couple of things you should know. 
She was supposed to be in it. Dominic, how's it going? Good. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think the timing is right. Well, you thought so a couple of weeks ago. You wanted to be on board. What happened? I'm still on board, but I think there's a couple things that we need to get straight before we go forward. We're talking about the right Cardinal situation? Yes, we are. I want that cleared away, Dominic. Well, you disciplined two of your officers. I did. Six-week suspensions. Ouch. That must have hurt. What would you suggest? Well, I think you ought to send a message to the public that you got their best interests at heart. At the same time, you still got to send a message to your members that you're going to watch their backs, too. I think I've done that. I disagree. What it looks like is that you close ranks around your officers without discrimination. The worst offenders, they got to be tossed. I can't do that. Look, I assume you know what I know. If there were two officers who took the lead here, and then there's at least two officers watching their back, the lead officers, I want them tossed. I don't think you even have a witness to any of this anymore. I understand he's somewhere in Australia. Witness? Witnesses can be found. Let's say I give you one of the offenders. Well, then I'd say that we're back on the square and working together on the red light district proposal. You'll drop any further investigation on the Cardinal case? I will. I'm also going to want to see some sort of signal from the justice minister letting me know that we're not to continue enforcing the present soliciting statutes. Oh, yeah. Well, I understand that's about to happen very soon. As soon as you can confirm that for me, I'm on board. Beautiful. I knew Will. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't. Yeah, well, we used to be friends a long time ago. Anyway, so he was making another run because he wanted to rush again? Does that sound right? Yeah. He got bored easily. So you knew then maybe he was up to something, even if you didn't know what. There were signs he was making a plan to do another run. You would have noticed that. He was acting a little differently, yeah. I guess you could say that. So you did know there was another big deal underway? No, I guessed that something was going on, but... You ever tell your brother about it? No, why would I? Well, you visited him in prison just a couple of weeks before Will was murdered, didn't you? I visited my brother every week. And did you ever tell him that Will was planning to make another big run? No. We never talk about things like that. OK. Well, thanks for your time. I'll be back to talk to you again, all right? Tell your brother I'm looking for him. Sure. It was delicious. Sorry the rest of the family couldn't come over. Should bring him a doggy bag, at least. We got plenty. Yeah, definitely. Next time it's at our place, I'll cook. Good. Sweetie, why don't you get your cousin a nice slab of ribs to take home, OK? OK. Teach la mamma pay you tare. Si. Nothing wrong at home, is there? No. Well, it was there, okay? It was there when it was told, because I saw it. Open. Is it there on the floor? Yeah, that's it there on the floor. But it wasn't there on the floor when it was told. It was up here. I leave it like there, there all the time, so I don't forget. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tear this one up. How's that? Thank you very much. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, my bag's gone. My, my, my briefcase, everything, my stuff. All my stuff was sitting on the front seat there when it was towed. Now it's not there. Where were you parked? No, oh, now it's in. I noticed you got a lot of scratches on your door lock here. Hmm? Looks like somebody was trying to jimmy you. No, 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 no. That was me. I, that was a couple of weeks ago. Look, I, I got to have the name of that driver. Can you give me the name of that driver that brought it in here? Well, I got to have it. I got a lot of sensitive material in that bag. I got to know if it was open. Did he open it? Did he get in here? Did he see somebody? You know what I mean? You sure your briefcase was in here? Yeah. You didn't leave it at the office? What's going on? We had Sue interrogation all night. I think they got a confession. Are you kidding me? 
was trying to see her all night. They had her somewhere else internal, probably. I'm getting shut out. Have you interviewed Brian Curtis about any of this yet? I haven't sat him down officially yet. He's next to my list. I'll see if there's anything to Sue's allegations. Then we've ruled it out and can show that we did. Okay, well, that brings us to the problem of Angela and her relationship. Is there anything concrete against her? It's all right there in her own files. Derek Prentice murder. Sue was in his apartment the night he died. She left and called it in hours later. She's an addict. Rick was a drug dealer. Despite all this, apparently Detective Cosmo refused to even look at Sue as a suspect. I mean, she could plead straight stupidity, I suppose. Naivete, however you want to put it. The point is, I think she's a liability in homicide. And you're going to have a hard time defending her. All right. Thank you. You say what? Come on over here and say that. Why don't you come on over here and say that right to my face? You're mobile. Okay, I'm right here. Beautiful. Damn it. What? My bag's missing. I got the car back. There's no bag in it. And this, this tow truck guy, this modern-day pirate, is trying to tell me I left my car wide open. Well, why would I leave my car wide open? And half my notes, my book's in there. That's half my notes from the last month. I don't even know what else is in that bag. You're not going to tell me now that I should have backed everything up and I wouldn't be in this problem right now, are you? Okay. That's good. Uh, Ted Fellows is here to see you. He's the father of Alice Fellows. Oh, okay. Maybe send him in. Okay, did you want to maybe take a minute, settle in, review oh. your file notes? I can't. My file notes are my... Oh, that's funny. You're funny. You got to write a book. Mr. Fellows? Hey. Nice to Ted Fellows is here to see you. He's the father of Alice Fellows. Oh, okay. Maybe send him in. Okay, did you want to maybe take a minute, settle in, review oh. your file notes? I can't. My file notes are my... Oh, that's funny. You're funny. You gotta write a book. Mr. Fellows? Hey, nice to meet you. First of all, my condolences. Thank you for seeing me on short notice like this. No, no, come on, take a seat. Uh, this won't take long. Okay. I understand that the young man who stole the car has now denied hitting her. Yeah, I understand that'd be correct, yeah. Well, if he's to be believed, who did hit her? Well, that's a good question. We're continuing to look into this. How's it going, this looking into it that you're doing? Well, I wish I had something concrete I could give you. My office is cooperating with the Accident Investigation Division of VPD, with their investigator over there. And we're all continuing to look into it. it. I was already over there at the accident division. Oh, yeah. And I was told that the lead investigator here had taken six weeks vacation. The lead investigator there. Yeah, it's true. He did take six weeks vacation. You're yeah. sticking my stepdaughter's investigation on the back burner. No, I really wouldn't characterize it like that. Well, how would you characterize it then? Hmm? Is it high priority, low priority, medium what? Very, very high priority. Sir, I wish I had a more satisfying answer I can give you. All I can do is tell you that when I do, I'll be calling you. I'm a criminal lawyer. Hmm? And if you would ask me how you sound, I'd have to say you sound pretty evasive with your answers. Huh? You're pretty much on the money there. So there's something going on here which you're not at liberty to share with me. That's correct. Not at this point in time, anyway. I'll tell you what. This is the card with my uh, direct line on it. I'll call that number whenever you feel like it. I'm not going to have to chase you down, am I? No, sir, you won't. All right, then. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. I've been reading and hearing about your various exploits in the media. No? Oh? You appear to be a man of integrity. Well, thank you. I hope that's true. Sanjay Gohill was wondering if you and I can join him later in the week for dinner to discuss the red light district. Yeah, sure. Anytime it suits you, suits me. Mm. Have you talked to the mayor yet? Well, I left a message. I said it wasn't about the red light district, but I haven't had a return call yet. And how about Bill Jacobs? How are things in that front? Same thing. Left a message, no return call. Okay, so if I tell Sanjay later in the week, we can sit down with him and tell him we have the city and the police on board? Well, probably. I mean, I left both these guys a uh, message stressing that it wasn't about uh, anything but the red light district, but. Still waiting for return calls from both. Okay, so what do you think, Thursday or Friday? Friday's probably better bet. All right, you good? Sleep at least. You haven't slept yet, have you? You could do that. Go to your drug counselor. You confessed to killing Danny. 
I don't have a drug counselor, and I didn't say that. You're going in circles. You didn't go for counseling. You didn't talk to a uh, Donald Marcos for heroin counseling? I only went to that place a couple times, and it was like months ago. You wanted to get clean? No, I just talked to the guy a couple times, and I didn't like him, so I didn't go back. Tell me this. Why would Brian kill his informant? What reason would he have to kill Danny Zero? I mean, what reason would he have to kill Carla, for that matter? I don't know. I mean, where did this idea come from? Did Angela Cosmo plant that in your head? No. OK, technically, I don't know that he killed Danny, but I know he killed Carla. How? Are you going to get that nurse in here or what? We'll see about that. Continue. I'm pretty sure I was there the night he killed Carla. You were there? OK, good. This is the whole truth, all right? This isn't a confession. I'm not confessing to anything myself. What happened? Brian asked me to make sure Carla was going to be home one night. OK. So Brian gave me a couple of flaps of down to split with her to guarantee I could keep her home for a while. So we split the flaps. And later that night, I left by the back door. I left it unlocked for Brian like he told me to. Then what? And nobody saw her after that. She was missing for a while. And they found her body in the basement. That's it? That's it. That's your confession? I told you, it's not a confession. So you set her up? No. I didn't know he was going to kill her. What did you think Brian was going to do? I don't know. She was avoiding him. Well, this doesn't prove anything. This isn't going to help you at all. Can you call the nurse now, please? I feel sick. Probably the most paranoid friend of all my paranoid friends. You know that? Paranoid? Maybe I'm just more aware that's going on all around than most people. Yeah, well, you see connections and uh, conspiracies where there aren't any. That's a probably a pretty classic definition of paranoia. Okay, well, you explain to me why I've got a private investigator going through my garbage and tell me I'm not paranoid. All right, why well, don't you start by uh, making up a list of all the people you've pissed off lately? Well, that's a very long list. It's my point. Okay, you start off at the top. I guess the mayor's got to be right up there. Your point is? Well, I'm thinking about mowing lines in the business community. Business community? What are you talking about? A safe injection site. What? Chinatown merchants aren't too thrilled with you institutionalizing that in the backyard. As if the Chinese merchants are going to hire a private investigator. Give me a break. What about the uh, red light district, huh? I mean, where are you going to put that without riling up the neighborhood, the tourism board? The tourism board's going to do I just told you I was the... Never mind, just take my money. I spent enough time on this already. Here, put it on that one. You got a supervisor here? It's not taking charge. Oh, I'm gonna try this one. You need to see a supervisor here? What well, seems to be the problem today, sir? What's the problem today? I'll tell you what the problem today is the fact that one of your drivers towed my car in here despite the fact I got a parking permit on display. Sometimes the drivers are just trying to keep up with the calls. Yeah, well, me too. Well, I want you to see for yourself. Would you just come with me for one second? I'm not seeing any tag up there. Well, it was there, okay? It was there when it was towed because I saw it. Open. Is it there on the floor? Yeah, that's it there on the floor. But it wasn't there on the floor when it was towed. It was up here. I leave it like there, there all the time so I don't forget. No, I'll tell you what. I'll tear this one up. How's that? Thank you very much. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, my bag's gone. My, my, my briefcase, everything. My stuff, all my stuff was sitting on the front seat there when it was towed. Now it's not there. Where were you parked? No, now it's in there. I noticed you got a lot of scratches on your door lock here. Hmm? Looks like somebody was trying to jimmy. No, 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 that was me. I, that was a couple of weeks ago. Look, I, I got to have the name of that driver. Can you give me the name of that driver that brought it in here? Well, I got to have it. I got a lot of sensitive material in that bag. I got to know if it was open. Did he open it? Did he get in here? Did he see somebody? You know what I mean? You sure your briefcase was in here? Yeah. You didn't leave it at the office? We had Sue in interrogation all night. I think they got a confession. Are you kidding me? I was trying to see her all night. They had her somewhere else internal, probably. I'm getting shut out. Have you interviewed Brian Curtis about any of this yet? I haven't sat him down officially yet. He's next to my list. I'll see if there's anything to Sue's allegations. We've ruled it out and can show that we did. Okay, well, that brings us to the problem of Angela and her relationship. 
Is there anything concrete against her? It's all right there in her own files. Direct Prentice murder. Sue was in his apartment the night he died. She left and called it in hours later. She's an addict. Rick was a drug dealer. Despite all this, apparently Detective Cosmo refused to even look at Sue as a suspect. I mean, she could plead straight stupidity, I suppose, naivete, however you want to put it. The point is, I think she's a liability in homicide, and you're going to have a hard time defending her. All right. Thank you. You say what? Come on over here and say that. Why don't you come on over here and say that right to my face? You're mobile. OK, I'm right here. Beautiful. Damn it. What? My bag's missing. I got the car back. There's no bag in it. And this this tow truck guy, this modern day pirate, is trying to tell me I left my car wide open. What, naivete on Detective Cosmo's part? Naivete, yes, in this particular instance. But Angela's relationship with this informant is not at all indicative of her career. I'm in agreement that she behaved inappropriately. But I think she deserves a second chance. Well, if we can get a conviction on the informant for the homicides and we get your detective's full cooperation in that, I see no reason why she can't continue. If the informant is convicted, Angela can stay in homicide. Seems fair enough to me. No? Seems fair. I'm coming to you because I'm investigating the death of Will Summers. Familiar with the name? Afraid not. Go see. He's a fisherman owned a boat named the Ocean Horizon. He got killed during an attempted ripoff of a couple thousand pounds of locally grown weed there. Yeah, I think I heard something about that. Oh, yeah? So, do you have any intelligence on his activities then that you might want to share with me? No, I wish I could help you out. But, uh, you know, if you have anything you want to share with me, I'd appreciate hearing from you. So you guys weren't running any operations then? It might have just overlapped there a little bit? No. Huh? What about a guy, a Vietnamese guy named Vin, Vin Tuan, you know that name? Not ringing a bell. Oh, so on his arrest sheet, you're down there as a part of an investigating team. Popped him on a marijuana trafficking charge like a year ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, OK. Uh, he may have been one of those involved in a conspiracy case. All right. I mean, I can get you whatever we have on him. Uh, Perfect. What's your name again? McCleary. You can just ship it off to Homicide and find its way to me. Next couple of days, OK? That'd be perfect. It's Mick Leary. Remember that name, don't you? Keep coming, keep coming, just keep coming. All right, stop, man, stop it. Yep. Is your name Monty? Yep. Hi, Monty. My name's Dominic Da Vinci. I'm with the coroner service, not a cop. Can I ask you a couple of questions about that hit and run? Go ahead and talk to my lawyer about that hit and run, man. I'm going to answer any questions. OK. See, I, I believe you didn't hit that girl. Well, that's good. I didn't. I'm still not answering you, though. You want to hear what I think happened? No, it doesn't matter at all. Well, it should. At all. Because this thing's not going to go away, Monty. Just because they tossed your statement out of court and you got yourself a nice job now and everything, it's definitely going to come back on your heart. Because you know what, Monty, in the natural order of things, you got a mayor, you got a police chief, and you got a car wash jockey. Now, who do you think ends up with the end of that stick? You. But I think I can see a way through this thing, okay? You stole the car, and I don't care where you stole it. If you stole it in front of the mayor's house or the girlfriend's house, that doesn't matter. But here's the question. This is important, okay? Did you notice if there was any damage on the front left side? Of that soup. Could you take that out of the room, please? Hey. Is this your car? Yeah, yeah, it is. What are you doing down on that fish boat that's off limits? You didn't see the crime tape on that? Take it easy on one of you guys. You're on the job. Yeah. You got some ID that shows that? Sure. OK, picking it up. Yeah. What's going on? What are you doing up here? Something I'm not liberty to share with you. I got a number you can call, though. Sounds like he's American. Hmm. You got somebody up here you're working with? Yeah. There you go. Hey. Hey. Everything went well with the guy in internal? Yeah, I, I think so. You're not going soft on me, are you? Am I going to have to testify in court? Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. Don, you heard somebody confess to a murder. She 
She's guilty. She killed somebody. No question. We got her on two others. According to you, Brian gave you the knife to plant in the councilman. Think Brian killed Rick? If it was Rick's blood on the knife, and Brian gave me the knife, duh. Well, if Brian killed Rick, he must have a lot of faith in you to trust you with a murder weapon like that. I guess. But you're saying you lied to Brian. You told him you planted the knife, but you never actually did it. Yeah. You lie to everybody, don't you? That's your thing. That's how you navigate through life. No, it isn't. You lie to Brian, you lie to Angela Cosmo, and you're lying to me. <sighs> no, I'm not. You know what? We don't even need to waste time talking about Rick Prentice. That's a slam dunk. How about we go back to Danny Zero and, uh... What's this girlfriend's name again? Hey, you with me? What's your name again? Carla. Carla Wonder. Right. I'd say, knowing what I know about you, that you're a hypocrite. Hypocrite? Like, all I'm saying is... If you can't have a little piece of action on the side discreetly, which obviously this mayor can't do, how can you expect him to run a, a city, let alone a province? He can upgrade his handlers. His handlers? The horse is out of the barn already. The best he can do now is get the broom and get the uh, dustpan. Huh? I'm getting the distinct impression you're not what? convinced he's out of trouble. Oh, yeah. You know your red light initiative depends on the mayor's election to another term. You understand that? You know, you seem to think that he's just going to win this next mayoralty contest, like in a walkover or something. I'm just not so sure he's going to clear all the necessary hurdles. Is there something? Oh, no. Oh. Oh, my bag's gone. My, my, my briefcase, everything, my stuff. All my stuff was sitting on the front seat there when it was towed. Now it's not there. Where were you parked? No, now it's in. I noticed you got a lot of scratches on your door lock here. Mm -hmm. Looks like somebody was trying to jimmy. No, 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 that was me. I, that was a couple of weeks ago. Look, I, I got to have the name of that driver. Can you give me the name of that driver that brought it in here? Well, I got to have it. I got a lot of sensitive material in that bag. I got to know if it was open. Did he open it? Did he get in here? Did he see somebody? You know what I mean? You sure your briefcase was in here? Yeah. You didn't leave it at the office. What's going on? They had Sue in interrogation all night. I think they got a confession. Are you kidding me? I was trying to see her all night. They had her somewhere else internal, probably. I'm getting shut out. Have you interviewed Brian Curtis about any of this yet? I haven't sat him down officially yet. He's next to my list. I'll see if there's anything to Sue's allegations. We've ruled it out and can show that we did. Okay, well, that brings us to the problem of Angela and her relationship. Is there anything concrete against her? It's all right there in her own files. Direct Prentice murder. Sue was in his apartment the night he died. She left and called it in hours later. She's an addict. Rick was a drug dealer. Despite all this, apparently Detective Cosmo refused to even look at Sue as a suspect. I mean, she could plead straight stupidity, I suppose. Naivete, however you want to put it. The point is, I think she's a liability in homicide. And you're gonna have a hard time defending her. All right. Thank you. You say what? Come on over here and say that. Why don't you come on over here and say that right to my face? You're mobile. Okay, I'm right here. Beautiful. Damn it. What? My bag's missing. I got the car back. There's no bag in it. And this this tow truck guy, this modern day pirate. He's trying to tell me I left my car wide open. Well, why would I leave my car wide open? And half my notes, my book's in there. That's half my notes from the last month. I don't even know what else is in that bag. You're not going to tell me now that I should have backed everything up and I wouldn't be in this problem right now, are you? Okay. That's good. Uh, Ted Fellows is here to see you. He's the father of Alice Fellows. Oh, okay. Maybe send him in. Okay, did you want to maybe take a minute, settle in? Review your file notes. I can't. My file notes are my. Oh, that's funny. You're funny. You gotta write a book. Mr. Fellow? Hey, nice to meet you. First of all, my condolences. Thank you for seeing me on short notice like this. No, no, come on, take a seat. Uh, this won't take long. Okay. I understand that the young man who stole the car has now denied hitting her. Yeah, I understand that'd be correct, yeah. Well, if he's to be believed, who did it? Well, that's a good question. We're continuing to look into this. How's it going, this looking into it that you're doing? Well, I wish I had some. I take my client's privacy very seriously. I've already made my statement about Sue's statement regarding Danny's Inn. 
Any other information is irrelevant, and I'm not going to simply hand it over to you. Mr. Da Vinci, you're next. Dominic, how's it going? Good. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think the timing is right. Well, you thought so a couple of weeks ago. You wanted to be on board. What happened? I'm still on board, but I think there's a couple things that we need to get straight before we go forward. We're talking about the right cardinal situation? Yes, we are. I want that cleared away, Dominic. Well, you disciplined two of your officers. I did. Six-week suspensions. Ouch. That must have hurt. What would you suggest? Well, I think you ought to send a message to the public that you got their best interests at heart. At the same time, you still got to send a message to your members that you're going to watch their backs, too. I think I've done that. I disagree. What it looks like is that you close ranks around your officers without discrimination. The worst offenders, they got to be tossed. I can't do that. Look, I assume you know what I know. That there were two officers who took the lead here, and then there's at least two officers watching your back. The lead officers, I want them tossed. I don't think you even have a witness to any of this anymore. I understand he's somewhere in Australia. Witness? Witnesses can be found. Let's say I give you one of the offenders. Well, then I'd say that we're back on the square and working together on the red light district proposal. You'll drop any further investigation on the Cardinal case? I will. I'm also going to want to see some sort of signal from the Justice Minister letting me know that we're not to continue enforcing the present soliciting statutes. Oh, yeah. Well, I understand that's about to happen very soon. As soon as you can confirm that for me, I'm on board. Beautiful. I knew Will. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't. Yeah, well, we used to be friends a long time ago. Anyway, so he was making another run because he wanted to rush again? Does that sound right? Yeah. He got bored easily. So you knew then maybe he was up to something, even if you didn't know what. There were signs he was making a plan to do another run. You would have noticed that. He was acting a little differently, yeah. I guess you could say that. So you did know there was another big deal underway? No, I guessed that something was going on, but... You ever tell your brother about it? No, why would I? Well, you visited him in prison just a couple of weeks before Will was murdered, didn't you? I visited my brother every week. And did you ever tell him that Will was planning to make another big run? No. We never talk about things like that. Okay. Well, thanks for your time. I'll be back to talk to you again, all right? Tell your brother I'm looking for him. Sure. It was delicious. Sorry the rest of the family couldn't come over. Should bring him a doggy bag at least. We got plenty. Yeah, definitely. Next time it's at our place, I'll cook. Good. Sweetie.